Hi, my name is Andrew Murphy and today I'm going to take you through a live process solution build using K2. Before we actually go and do the build, what I'd like to do is to introduce you to the typical components that are required in this kind of solution. First of all we're going to require a portal and for this we'll use SharePoint. K2 has great integration into SharePoint giving the ability not only to surface your tasks and collaborate with SharePoint information but also to design your process direct with inside of SharePoint. So once we've got our portal configured, the next thing we'll need is the ability to actually design the process. Today we're going to use K2's designer for SharePoint, which will enable me to graphically design a process directly from within inside of SharePoint. Once the process has been designed, then we'll deploy that process so that it's ready to be executed. K2 has a workflow server which will manage all of the execution of your processes. But in addition to that, it provides the ability for you to get a, a view uh, a live view on what's actually happening inside of your process. So you can actually see directly what step your process is at and details such as who's involved at those steps and how long those steps have taken. When a process is actually executing and um, running and we've had it out there for a little while then it's very useful to be able to get reporting information. K2 provides um, a suite of out-of-the-box reports and web parts which let you configure reporting portals so that not only the people that are dealing with the process on a day-to-day -day basis but also so that um, the administrative and management task can come in and see what's happening against the process solution that you build. In addition to the reporting capabilities it's often a requirement that we give people an area where they can go and actually manage one-to-many workflow processes that they might be process owners of. K2 provides process portals which let you logically group uh, processes into a portal and give you all of the administrative tasks that you need in order to do the day-to-day -day management of those tasks, such as seeing what processes are deployed and the version that's there, as well as your management work lists. So you can see across selected processes what tasks are out there running and who they're actually allocated with as well as being able to get a view on how many process instances are running, which ones might be in error state, and the ability to run reports and to do management tasks such as allocating permissions against processes and data. Once a process is um, out there running and we've used the out-of-the-box K2 tooling, K2 has the fantastic ability to enable you to leverage additional Microsoft technologies to extend your workflow solution. An example of this is using K2's integration for Visio. What we have the ability to do here is to use K2's smart objects as data sources to feed Visio diagrams with your process and business data. This gives the ability for you to map out your process in a way that makes sense to your business, publish it into SharePoint uh, using Visio services, and then have a real-time view on what's happening inside of your workflow process engine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at building all of that from scratch. Now we're going to go and build out our process solution. I'm going to start off by opening the browser as Mike, and Mike is in charge of knowledge management within inside of the organization. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to go and build a new idea process solution. So what we need to be able to do is to manage, give people the ability to upload new ideas and then manage the process of taking that new idea through its various approval or decline cycles. In order to build this, I've got a quite a vanilla SharePoint site, which we're going to address as we go through this solution. So we're going to um, put in work lists and reports, etc. Um, I also have some standard libraries and some customized lists that we'll use um, through the process solution. Some of the lists which we have are um, an idea categories list, so that we can just enable people to come in and add new categories, which will then uh, be available when people are submitting ideas. We also have a list of award types, so if a new idea is approved and we wish to um, allocate award out to people, then we can select from a, a category of awards. Um, I also have um, a external list, so using BCS services, what I've done is utilized K2 smart objects to front a company award system. Then I've exposed those smart objects as WCF services and used SharePoint business connectivity services to provide an external list which will surface that information in SharePoint and also later on we'll see that we're able to communicate with that external service using our designers. Importantly inside of here as well I have a new ideas document library and this is where I can come in and I can actually upload my new idea. So it's a standard document library with some customized metadata associated to it. 
So let's take a look and see how we go and build the process. When K2 for SharePoint is installed, I can come along to the library button and across the ribbon we'll have K2 process icon. When I click onto that icon, it loads up the K2 designer for SharePoint. The K2 designer for SharePoint enables me to create new processes or edit or share existing processes. Today we're going to create a brand new process which will manage the submission of our new ideas. When I select create new process, then I'll be given a wizard which will take down all of the information I need in order to start this process. So the first thing I need to do is give it a name. So here this will be our new ideas process. And I can give that a category, so I'm going to store this under knowledge management. The next thing I can see is that I've got the ability to actually decide when this process will start. So we could have it started manually, or today we're going to say start the process when an item is created. I also have the ability to specify a description so that when the task is allocated to users, this is the description that will appear in their task list. In all of our wizards, we have a context browser. So here we can gain a context of what's going on against the SharePoint metadata columns associated to the new idea list, as well as the ability to see document context. And in this case, what we're doing is we're using the name of the uploaded document as a description for the task that's been allocated. That's all the information I need to give in order to start the process. So I'll just click Finish. Now I have a design canvas where I can go and um, build my, my process and set the flow. The functionality inside of the K2 Designer for SharePoint is broken up with common functionality across this ribbon bar. And then we have subcategories down the left which enable us to perform other operations which we'll work through as we go through today. The first thing I want to do is to allocate a task out to my manager so that they can review my new idea and decide whether it's worthy of taking forward. To do that, I can just drag the user task down into the container. And now I get a wizard which I can fill out in order to give enough information for this step to be allocated. So the first thing is going to be um, the name. So we'll just say this is the review idea step. The instruction. So I want to say please review the idea and assess potential savings. Now, once the task has been allocated, what actions can this um, to the manager approve? So first thing they can say is, well, actually, um, I want to have uh, a review step. So they want to be able to send this back to the originator to say, I like the idea, you know, but please uh, have a look at the document update section X, Y, Z. And then they can resubmit it back for the review cycle to continue. They could, of course, decide just to set the, to decline it. So we can set the um, actions declined. Or they could say that it's been approved. So they like the new idea and they'd like to step it on and, and move it through the process. So now I've specified what they can do. What we need to do now is specify, well, when they've chosen their action, where do we go next in the process? So, so far we've got no other steps, so it's all off to new workflow steps. Now what I need to do is specify what the form will look like. So K2 has the ability to automatically generate SharePoint forms for you based on um, SharePoint metadata columns or data fields that you define in the process. So for this form, what I want to do is I'll say, okay, well, I want to know um, who the new idea was uh, created, uh, when it was created, who it was created by, the details. Um, we'll give the name of the document. We'll also specify um, the um, category. So let me just scroll up and get the category. Um, and what I also want to do is to give them the ability to have a look at the um, projected project savings so they can see whether, you know, it's in line with the document as well as some factual information to see whether this idea is worth taking forward. I can specify whether these are required or read-only fields. So what I want to do is specify these are actually all read-only and any amendments will be done by sending this back to the originator for them to review. Now I've given the form, the next thing I need to do is specify, well, who's going to get the work. K2 gives the ability to um, have these short and handy um, quick option, so I can say, well, I'm going to allocate this to the manager, but I could also allocate it across to individual users, Active Directory groups, um, K2 defined roles or SharePoint groups, and we'll take a look at those a bit later as well. So I specified who's going to get the work, and I click Finish. So now I've got the review idea stage, and I've got these three new steps which I need to go and fill out. So the first thing I'm going to do is specify, okay, what happens when um, it's being sent back for review? So nice and simple, again, I just drag in a user task. And against that user task, I begin to give some uh, descriptions. So for the name of the process, we'll say that this is originator review. And the instruction is, please review comments and update 
the document and information. The next thing we need to do is give them their actions. So obviously they can say that the review is complete, so they've done everything and they're going to send it back to their manager. Or they could decide to withdraw the idea. So they said, okay, well actually, you know what, um, I don't think this is a good idea anymore, I'd like to withdraw it. So we can say, okay, you can withdraw the idea. Then as before, we specify, okay, well, where does this go? So with the review, if it's complete, then we can just send it back to the review idea stage. But if it's been withdrawn, then we're going to send it to a new workflow step and we'll decide what happens uh, in a moment in the canvas. I need to specify the form. This person doesn't need as much information because they, you know, they submitted it, so they know who they are. But we'll let them see uh, the category, the details, the name of the document, um, also the projected project savings, so they could update that. And we'll say that these are all required fields. So on different user tasks, you can have different information and different required and read-only uh, capabilities as well. Now I've specified the form. Who are this, who's the participants? So K2 keeps a track for us, so we know who submitted it. So we'll just send that back to the originator. Click Finish. Now inside of our canvas, we've got this nice um, feedback loop. So the originator and their manager can work on this idea as many times as they like until such time as it's you know, either declined or approved and moves on through the rest of the process. Now with the process as it is, what I want to do is to tackle what happens if the manager approves the idea. So what I have inside the organization is we have an idea evaluation team which will take originally approved ideas and assess whether they would actually be beneficial to the company as a whole. So I'm just going to allocate out a user task into the approved area and I'll begin to fill out the wizard. So this is going to be um, work that's allocated out to the evaluation team. So we'll just say we're going to evaluate the idea. And the instruction is please review the idea and assess the company savings. What can they do? So we could say, well, actually, they're going to say that it's been declined, or they can say that it's been approved. For the outcomes, we'll leave those as they are for now. And for the form, we're going to let them see um, the usual stuff. So we can let them see who it was created by, when it was created, the details, the name of the document. We're going to let them see the category. We'll also let them see the um, projected uh, company savings and project savings. So as well as the initial project savings, we want them to put in the projected company savings. Also, we're going to let them actually decide whether they'd like to allocate out an award. So if there's something that will be taken forward, we'll let them specify a particular type of award, which will then hit through to our uh, back-end award system. And I can specify, okay, well, all of these areas here are read-only, um, but the projected company savings is required and the award is optional. Now I specify who the participants are. So here I'm going to actually allocate this to a SharePoint group because I maintain my evaluation team inside of SharePoint. So here I just search across and I'll say, okay, well, let's allocate that out to the evaluation team. But I also know that inside of my organization, IT um, actually take on and evaluate their own ideas. So what I want to do is to say, well, I want to add a second task group. So we'll add another task group. And this task group here ideas are going to be actually allocated out to the IT team. The IT team are actually um, defined inside of Active Directory. So I'll just do a search across and I'll allocate the work to the IT team. So now what will happen is this task will be allocated at the moment to both of these teams. So what I need to do is to put some logic behind so they will only allocate it out to the right group of people. So nice and easy, I just come across and say, well, let's go and edit this task group. I'll give it a nice name. So this is to the evaluation team. And we'll say only send the workflow based on some conditions. So the conditions I'm going to use is the category of idea uh, as defined in the metadata column. So I'll just say, well, if the category of this new idea doesn't equal IT, then we'll send it to the evaluation team. And I'll put a second piece of logic down here to say, OK, this is going to go to the IT team. And it's only going to go to the IT team. In actual fact, again, if the category but this time if the category is equal to IT. So I click OK. So now this task will be allocated dynamically to the right team depending on the category of that task. So I just click Finish. And now I've got this new um, area over here where I can now begin to, to build out this process. So what I wanted to do is say, OK, well, I'm going to follow this path down here. So if the originator withdraws the idea, then what I want to do is to record against the document metadata that the idea has been withdrawn. 
So what I do is I can just come down and say, well, I'm going to go and uh, deal with the details of the document. And here we've got all of the SharePoint functionality that you expect to be able to, to deal with inside of your process designer. And one of those is to update the document metadata. So I'm going to drop that in. K2 will go off and have a look at the underlying SharePoint list and will build me nice UI, which will enable me to specify, you know, which of these metadata columns am I, am I dealing with. So there's two things I want to do. First is I want to specify that the ID has been withdrawn. And the second thing I want to do is to specify a date so that I can see when it was withdrawn. Now, K2 has the ability to um, give me what we call inline functions. This lets me actually perform operations which I would otherwise have to either drop into code or do something complex like call a web service for. So inside of here, what I want to do is I want to do some, uh, I want to get today's date so I can browse and I can find today's date. Or again, I can just do a search and I can say, well, I want to get right now, find that, and I can just drag that into the approval date. So now we've got a function that will then fill in our date for us. It's everything I need inside of here. So I just click OK. And now I've got this new step here, which will specify that it's been withdrawn. So I'm just going to rename that so that when the workflow runs, it makes sense to the people looking at the um, live view flow. So we'll just say this is the withdrawn step. Just click finish. And what I want to do is go and do that for all of these other steps as well um, to update the metadata. But I know that I'm going to use this um, same activity with similar configuration. So what K2 does, it lets me actually save favorites. So I can just take this and I can drop it onto my favorites bar. And now that will be uh, able for me to use nice and sort of reuse across my process. So what I can do is say, OK, well, I'm going to use that and I'm going to drop that down into um, my decline step. So I'm going to say, well, if it's declined, then drop that down. And what we'll see is that that already has all of the configuration information inside of the wizard. So here I've got that um, inline function that I used. And all I need to do is just say, OK, well, this, this one here has been declined. Click OK. Uh, then I'm going to do the same thing for the approved. So I'm just going to drop that down and say that it's been approved. So inside of here, I'm going to specify that it's been approved. Click OK. And I'm just going to go through and just update the descriptions of these. So this is going to be declined. This step here is going to be approved. Next thing I need to do is to say, OK, well, I've got this area here where if it's originally declined, what do I do with it? Well, all I actually in fact want to do is just to send it through to this same decline step. So I can just come in and say, well, let's go and have a look at the workflow outcomes. And on declined, I'm actually going to send that through to the decline step, which I just defined. Click OK. And now we can see we've got a process which will run um, and in fact is you know, ready to go. But what I want to do is to specify, OK, well, when this is completed, I want to let the originator know what the outcome was. So to do that, um, I'll send them an email. So what I do is I'll say, OK, well, let's have a new workflow step. So we'll add a new step and we'll just call that next. Click OK. And then into this placeholder, what I'll do is I'll come to my workflow steps. I'll swap back to my common operations and I'll say, OK, well, I'm going to go and send an email. So I'll pull that in and I'll get a different wizard come up and I'll go and fill that wizard out. So for this email, I'm going to specify who it's from. So in this case, I'll send it from the administrator at my domain. And you don't have to hard type that in. That could be through configuration. Who's that going to go to? So we're going to send that to the originator. So I'll just search across and say, OK, well, let's send that to the originator's email. Uh, what's the subject going to be? So this is going to be, I will say, new idea. And then we'll use our context menu here to uh, give it some relevance. So we'll say new idea based on the uh, document name. So we'll grab in the document name. And then I'll just put the status in so I can see whether it's been approved, declined, etc. So we'll say OK for status. Then I can give it uh, some body text. So I'll say dear. And I want to search for the originator again. I'll be quite formal and I'll use their first name. So dear originator, full name. Your new idea. We'll just drag in the document name. With details. And we'll just pull in the details that we had. Has been. And then again, we'll just put the status in. Kind regards, K2. So now we've got an email which will go out and let the originator know the outcome of their workflow process. So we'll just click OK. So we've got the send email. Um, 
What I'll do is I'll just rename that again so that we know who that email is going out to. So we'll say email originator. What I'd like to do is to say, okay, well, I need all of these to go across to the same step. Nice and easy. I just come to the workflow outcomes of that particular step, add a new outcome. So this is going to be, um, I'll just say, okay, next. And we'll send that up to the email originator step. And then I'll do the same thing here. So we'll add another step. And that again is going to go up to the email originator step. So what I've got here is a completely valid process, which will let me collaborate against that um, new idea to see whether it gets approved or not. And then the evaluation team can see whether they'll take it forward or not. And then we'll set the status so that we can see what happened to it. And we notify the originator. But there's quite a bit more that we can do inside of this process. So one of the things which I can do is to say, well, I know that the evaluation team have got a um, Excel spreadsheet, which actually keeps track of all of the projected company savings. So one of the things which we asked them to do here was to have a look at the projected project savings and work out what the projected company savings would be for the year. Well, we can automate that for them. So what I can do is, if let's just borrow this URL across the top here for a second, and we'll just open up a page. And inside of that page, inside of SharePoint, then I've got a forecast sheet. So this is an Excel spreadsheet. And if we open up that Excel spreadsheet, what we'll see inside of here is that we've got um, a forecast sheet where we can put inside this cell E8 the projected savings. And what we can do is we can then pull out of our cell G34 the projected most likely savings for 2011. So let's go and see how we do that inside of our designer. Well, first of all, I just need to insert a new step. So I just say, OK, yep, let's go and add a new step here. And what I do is I can then say, OK, well, I'm going to go and get this value and I'm going to store it inside of the metadata column for projected company savings. So for that, I need um, a, a metadata task. So I'm just going to say, well, let's go and update the document metadata. Once that's inside of there, then the value that I want to update is actually the projected company savings. Now, how do I do that? How do I reach out to the Excel spreadsheet? Well, I use my inline functions so I can come down and I can see, OK, we've got some Excel inline functions and we've got ones which will um, get a cell value with some input. What I'm also able to do, though, just like I could save my um, common events that I configured, I can also save inline functions. So here I've got two saved inline functions, and one of them is actually going to go and get the forecast value and convert it to a decimal. So if I drop that in uh, to the column, then we can then see, OK, well, it's going to go off and get the forecast and convert it to a decimal, so it's the right format for the, um, the metadata column. If I double click on that, we can just go and take a look and see what that's actually doing for me. So inside of there, we can see that what we've got is an inline function that's going to go and reach off to an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, it's going to reach into the forecast sheet name. It's going to set some values into a range of inputs, in this case, a single cell E8. For the input value, it's going to get that from the projected project savings metadata column. And once that's been set, Excel will run its calculation, and then we'll reach in and we'll grab the output value from cell G34. Once that output value has been um, received, it will convert that to a decimal, and that will then be saved into the projected company savings metadata column. So I just click OK. And as I did before, I can actually just come and give this um, a nice name. So I can say get projected savings. So now when the evaluation team gets the idea, they already have um, uh, that projected savings value. So they don't need to go and look it up. No, it's already been automated for them. So the next piece of automation I can do is to say, well, there's there's been a request from um, the uh, team, and the team has said that what they'd actually like is that if a new idea does need to go for review, so if we need to go to this um, loopback stage, then what they want to do is they actually want um, a meeting booked out in the originator's calendar, in their exchange calendar, so that there's actually somewhere, a placeholder, so they can go and actually carry out that meeting. So we can do that with K2. So we just need to insert a new step. So yeah, we'd like to insert a new step, please. And what I want to do is I want to do something with Exchange. So I'll just drop down to the Exchange category. And inside of here, I'll say, well, I'm going to go and send a meeting request. Now, I perform this quite a lot inside of my um, process designs. 
So I've already got a favorite for that. So I can just drop down and say, well, I'm going to use my um, favorite exchange meeting request. Just drop that in and it will have most of the pre-configured information already there for me. So it's going to send it to the originator. It's for a review. Um, I commonly run that uh, in the office. I've used my inline functions to go and actually um, add a couple of days to today. So it's an all day meeting and I'm setting that as tentative. So I'll just click next and now I can say, OK, well, what's going to go in the uh, body of the meeting? So we'll say um, review of new idea. And then we can just give that some context. So review that idea. Who needs to come to the meeting? So I'm going to actually say we need the originator and their manager. I don't need any optional attendees. Finish. So now what will happen is that this meeting request will uh, be sent and there will then be a calendar entry to be approved by the manager and the originator so they have uh, a meeting book they can collaborate on this this idea. So we can now take this and we can deploy it and we get a lot of uh, additional added value. But there are still additional things that we can do to improve this process. So the next piece of improvement that I can do is to say, well, I know that I've got a back-end award system and that award system is fronted by K2 Smart Objects and we've exposed that as external list. So rather than have this evaluation team, if they give an award, have to go off to that separate system, we can automate that for them. We can add an item into that external list and let K2 manage pushing that to the backend system for me. So in order to do that, it's nice and easy. I just need to add a new um, parallel uh, outcome here. So I'll have a new outcome here, which is award allocated. And what I'll do is I'll put a rule behind here so that we only go down this path if the team has actually given an award. So I'll just click edit. And here we'll say, OK, well, let's add a statement. We'll add a statement to say, OK, well, if um, at least one person has said that it's been approved and if an award has been given. So we'll just have a look and find that award. So we'll say and an award. And I know that's a textual value. So I'll just say if the award is not equal to an empty string. Then what we can do is say we'll go off to a new workflow step. So I'll click OK. So now if it's approved and an award has been allocated, then we can come down here. So all I need to do now is to add an item to that um, list. So I'll just come down to my list category and I'll say what we're going to do is we're going to go and create a list item. So I can just drop that in to the award allocated step. Now K2 has a look and sees what lists are available and the list we're going to use is our company awards external list. So I'll click next. Just as easy as it was with a normal list, I can just come in and say, well, these are the values I need for that award. So I need the user. So we'll just say, OK, we're going to put in the originator. We need the description. So that is going to be, uh, we're going to say inside of here, uh, award for idea. And then we'll just drop in the name of the idea. And we're going to give, um, specify what the cash value is that came from that. So we just need to have a look and we can put in the award cash value. So now I've got that. I just click finish and that will then go and um, create that item there. So we'll just give that a good name. So we'll just say update awards system. So now I've got this parallel uh, branch here which will update the, the award system. So that's all good. Um, but again, there are additional things that we can do inside of here. So one of the things which we need to take a look at is to say, well, I can see that there are some um, parallel um, branches that are going on here. We can also see there are some areas which we're beginning to merge things together in. So K2 will enable you inside of the designer for SharePoint and all its designers to manage how you want to pull things back together. So at this step here, we're emailing the originator. And I can see because I've got these branches coming into this one step that I've now got this merge option. So if I click onto the merge option, we can see that quite correctly because we'll only go down one of these branches in this process, I can specify whether to start this immediately or whether I'd like to wait until, and then it'll dynamically populate the previous steps that are applicable that I could select and say, well, wait for all of these three to complete. In this scenario, it's correct just to leave them to say, start immediately when this has been finished. So we can see that the process will end uh, when, is, when it's correct for it to end. Now, once this is out there and running, there are some additional things that we can do. So the business might say, well, what I would like is that when this process is complete, 
I would like actually a copy of the originally submitted idea to um, be converted to a PDF format so that we can then um, store that uh, in another library. So that's easy for me to do. I just say, well, let's go and add a new step here. So we'll say, well, let's go and add um, a new outcome here. So we'll just say that's next. Let's go into a new step and I want to convert that. So I just drop down and I can come down to my word steps. And under here, this is where we can add a reference to another document and that's been uploaded. We could create documents. We can update content controls inside of Word documents or we can convert the document. So we'll just say, well, let's go and convert that document. K2 will say, OK, well, um, it knows the document which you want to convert because that's the one that's uploaded to the library. So all I need to do is specify, OK, well, um, where is it going to store the converted document? So we'll store that into the ideas documentation library. And what format do we want to save that as? So in this case, we'll save that as a PDF. Click Finish. So now at the end of the process, that document will be converted and it'll be stored inside of the uh, new ideas library as a PDF document. The next thing that um, the team has said is, um, even though we've got this meeting sitting in there, what we want is an actual fact for when the um, originator gets their task, we want them to have some reminders. So we want to send out an email to them to say, you know, you've still got this review outstanding. So very easy for us to do that inside of K2. I can just come in and right click and say, well, let's go and add what we call an escalation. So an escalation lets me specify what should happen if this particular task isn't done within a particular time frame or by a particular date. So I can just say, well, let's go and add an escalation. Um, let's give it a name. So this is my uh, two-day rule. And I can specify the type of escalation. So we can email it, we could redirect the task, or we could just expire it. So I'm going to email after, and I'm going to email after a couple of days. So we'll just say email after a couple of days. And we're going to repeat it a couple of times so that the originator gets enough opportunity to be reminded to do this task. I'll click Next. Now we specify inside of here uh, who's it from. So we'll just say this again. This is from the administrator at my domain. Who's it going to go to? So I can say, well, just send that to the originator. And the subject is going to say, you have an outstanding task. So here we'll just say the originator please complete your review task. And just so they know what that's about we'll just say new idea and we'll just put in the name of the document. Click finish. So now we've got a rule which will then go and remind the originator to go and do that work every couple of days. So now the business are happy. We can deploy this and it's running. It's uh, managing the approval process. It's booking meetings. It's getting uh, savings, projected savings from Excel. It's updating back end award systems and it's sending out reminders. But now what we've done is we've been running this for a little while. And what we now have is we've built a uh, project process. So what we have inside the company is that when we're taking on a new project, we actually have a formal workflow process that will take, um, uh, actually manage the running of that um, new project from start to finish. So wouldn't it be a good idea that if a new idea is approved, that we're able to kick off that new project process so the project team can decide how they would like to implement that new idea. So what I can do is I can say, well, OK, if it's been approved, let's add another step. So we'll just add a new outcome. So we'll say, uh, well, this is going to be the new project and we're going to go to a new workflow step so I'll click OK. Now at this step here what I want to be able to do is to start the new project process. Well if I come back to my general category then we've got the ability to call a sub process. So I can just drop that in and what K2 will do now is it will have a look across the deployed processes 